Hey guys, Dan here. Uh, let's get a quick update in before the Fed. Um, I don't want to predict what the Fed's going to do. Uh, it's really impossible. Uh, but I can tell you is over the last 30 years, that's right, 30 years, I haven't watched every single Fed meeting. Um, and I've seen some very interesting things, you know, throughout those decades. And the Fed has been known, not this Fed, but previous Feds have been known to completely shock the market and go the other way. Um, and I, I can see a scenario where, where Powell could do that. Um, but I'm not telling you to count on it. it. It's just the majority of market participations, participants uh, believe there will not be any easing until June. Market's also gone from six Fed easings to three now. So it's not so much what he's going to do today. It's it's really going to be all about what he says he's likely to do in June. So you have to listen because he does speak in riddles. Um, if he comes off even slightly hawkish, prepare for a massive sell-off in the markets. Um, I'm not sure how, how badly bonds would do because bonds kind of already priced in um, this current situation. Maybe they would fall a little bit. And as always, you know, I recommend if you're a loan officer to not float through these uh, these Fed meetings. Any important, CPI, whatever. Okay, so let's look where we are today. This is a day chart uh, on SPY and a couple things I want to point out. Number one, there is this massively annoying dark pool at 515.81. It's been incredibly persistent. If you look at the day chart, you'll see it. we just keep hitting against it over and over and over. The scale is different on the day chart, so it's hard to see that. But that pool is big, half a billion dollars. Um, and two cents above that, you have another $130 million dark pool. So call that effectively uh, almost $650 million in dark pools right around the 515.80. That's, that's quite the wall. Um, but then on top of that, we have this GEX level, which is essentially the dealer hedging. And so the dealers are hedged at 516. Again, adding to this really the sickness of this wall. Down below us, we have pretty good support uh, with a lot of dealer hedging at 515. Um, the next dark pool is not all the way down to 512, oddly. So this range is going to be um, important and we are gonna stay stuck kind of between 515 and 516 until some greater force knocks us out. And that greater force will probably happen today. Um, dealer deltas, uh, when you see green, think red because uh, the dealers are hedging bullish because they're holding bearish positions. So this is really more of a, of a bearish signal. And you can see when they were hedging red, the market just kept on climbing. So that's not, it's not a bad little clue. Uh, and then lastly, we'll just look at the uh, systems support and resistance levels. You know what? I think I've got to go down to a different time frame here. It'll be easier. That's better. Uh, so we have um, pretty good support uh, right at 515. And we've tested that over and over and over. And it makes sense because, again, it's right kind of around where that solid wall is. Uh, and then the next support is not, not down until 505. Um, if you look at the shorter term chart real quick, I'm, just want, I'm not going to replay everything. I'm just going to show you these uh, support and resistance levels. Then you'll see again, 515.91. Well, of course, because that's where the dark pool is. You're going to see resistance. Support, 514.80. Makes sense. We have stuff going on down here. The overall market flow has been negative. Okay, so let's switch gears now. I'm going to show you something new. If I can bring it up. Okay, let's blow this up. Okay, so um, these are uh, what Investor Business Daily calls um, psychological market indicators. And um, there's five of them. One of them is proprietary to them. The others we use all the time, and you see them in my weekly videos. Not all the time, but often. So we have the uh, market volatility, which is really the VIX. So the VIX is currently at 1387. 
Uh, you can see it's sitting on its 10 day moving average and it's just below its 50. Did I get that in the right order? Other way around. It's right below the 10, it's sitting on the 50. And the VIX is considered significant when at any time it can move 20% uh, above its 10 day. So the 10 day, uh, I can't tell exactly where it's sitting, but it looks like right about 14-ish. Uh, so somewhere around 16, 17 becomes a big deal for the VIX. Tells you the market volatility has really kicked up. I'm personally stunned by how low volatility is ahead of a Fed meeting. Uh, then we have the put to call ratio. That's pretty simple. Um, and when you see more puts than calls, then you're, you should be thinking bearish. And we've come just very recently in, in just days from about a seven put to call ratio, maybe six and a half to nine. So again, much more bearish. You're seeing more puts come in. When you cross the 115 line, it becomes a contrarian index. Now that, that's when it's going to fall back down. You can see how that's happened every time. Uh, High-low ratio. Um, the IBD says it's their their proprietary index, but we use something like this all the time. And what you can see is the amount of uh, highs to lows has been falling quite a bit. The number was over four, four and a quarter, uh, and it's fallen down almost to two. So again, this kind of reinforces a slightly bearish undertone in the market, not necessarily showing up in price, but things like this are little kind kind of clues. Bull versus bears, well, of course, uh, there are four times as many bulls as there are bears. This divergence between the two is literally chilling. <laughs> it's way too wide. And you can see last time it wasn't anywhere near this wide and it just came, boom, the jaws shut. I call this the jaws of death. They will clamp down. And when they do clamp down, the market will sell off. You can see what happened last time it clamped down. We're way, way too divergent here. And then lastly, this is one of my favorite um, margin debt is also surprisingly low. So when investors are, are like, you know, giddy, they're going to use margin like there's no tomorrow and they're going to overly margin. They're going to get themselves in trouble. This is, happens every single time. Um, but the margin debt is incredibly low given the overall um, market. I mean, I'm surprised there's not more leverage. And what this tells you is that there's probably not a bubble right now. Put all the data together, it tells you there probably will be a pretty good pullback, but we're not in a bubble. At least that's that. That's my two cents. Um, last but not least, let's pull up our map signals. Sorry, I should add this already. So the big money index has been working its way down again. You can see it's fallen since uh, last Wednesday. It was 73.6. Now it's 70. So it's fallen about three and a half percent since Wednesday. Uh, more importantly and easier to understand is looking below the amount of buys and sells. Um, it sure looked like the selling was coming in. Um, we saw a couple of really big days of selling uh, and then boom, stops. Yesterday we had more buys than sells. Today, uh, sorry, Monday, yesterday, we had a lot more buys than sells. So it seems to me the big money is still engaged, but they're not as engaged or the BMI would not be dropping. So I think that's about it for now. This was way too long as always. Um, let me know your thoughts. If you want me to try to get these under five minutes or four minutes, you pr I probably should. Talk to you later. Bye.